It all begins with a message about the biographies of prominent people of the Linoa continent, and it is on page 877 that we are talking about the greatest among all those who lived on the mainland at all times. Human thought has given him many epithets, but everyone agreed with that, that this man is the most famous and famous. Everyone around him loved and respected him. He was a star. This man was the most outstanding spiritual mage and an unsurpassed strategist. It became the basis of the success of everything that existed in the world at that time. And in fact, this person was the daughter of the Artina family, not only the bright rulers of the human empire, but also demons bowed their heads before this girl. Even the spirits of the world listened to the girl and respected her. Her entire path was paved with flowers, and her traces were achievements that all the people around deeply respected and could not admire. But this outstanding girl actually wanted simple, ordinary things, just like everyone else. Deep down, she just wanted to love and be happy with her loved one. The gossip said that she had a very strong connection with a person who was always near her. To some extent, it was possible to say that the girl had achieved what she had so longed for. It was a simple wish of an ordinary girl. And the story began next time. A girl from our world dies. Before her death, she remembers her whole story. Her parents died early, so she was taken in by relatives. Life with them could not be called life. It was just torture. She was often beaten. And hiding from creditors was a common thing for her. The only thing that saved her was education. She tried in every possible way to achieve a better life and escape from relatives who tormented her. She was not frightened by the fact that the line of life did not resemble a blooming alley, but a path through the desert. She tried to believe that she would live her life honestly and with dignity, and she will not be ashamed of how she will do it. In fact, she just wanted peace. But the moment of death scared the girl very much. She could not understand where she was. The first thing that came to mind was that she had gone to the afterlife. The girl wondered where she had gotten to. Was it heaven or was it hell? She leaned towards the latter because she died without paying off the entire loan. But it seemed wrong to her to think about it at such a moment. The man standing in front of her said that this was definitely not hell. The girl thought who was in front of her. He was clearly not an ordinary man. But she imagined God differently. Then where could she be? The man said that the girl was an unusual person because his energy did not affect her in any way. The frightened girl said that she was always praised for her good mind. The man assured that it was not so. After all, the man had never met a person who tried to save a spirit and simply drowned because of it. The girl remembered how before her death she saw the silhouette of a girl who seemed to be from the water. The stranger explained that this spirit was able to break through the gate he had opened into their world. And so the girl saw the creature, thinking it was a drowning girl. Thus, she died. An accident brought the water spirit together with the girl. And the mortal woman, not knowing what to do, rushed to help the drowning woman. And thus, she died. The girl realized that she died trying to save the water spirit. And although it looked very strange, the girl herself did not think that it was a senseless and just a stupid death. There is nothing in this world that she could regret. She was so sure of her correctness. The stranger was surprised when he heard her thoughts. He couldn't believe that the girl had asked if the water spirit was all right. It just didn't fit in his head. The man replied that nothing terrible had happened. Spirits, he said, could not live where no one believed in them. And to give up their dimension meant for them to die a slow and terrible death. And in the world of people, less and less believed in spirits. And only the poor girl, when she saw the water spirit, rushed to help her. Without even thinking, she risked her life. And so, she believed. And thanks to this, the spirit was able to survive. The stranger thanked the girl. It is a pity that she lost her life in the process. The girl replied that she had not lost anything. But the man stopped her and said that it was not fair. Spirits always gave as much as they took. It was hard to blame them for taking too much. And since she lost her life saving a young spirit, she must get a new life. The spirits were going to give her a new life. The girl asked if she could really be reincarnated into someone else. The stranger said it was, but she will forget her previous life. The girl was full of gratitude to her savior. She said that she has never asked God for anything, 
but now she has a unique opportunity to beg to finally be surrounded by her own loving people. But if it is impossible to do this, then she prefers to simply die and not have the opportunity to be reborn in the next life. The man assured her that she should not ask for such a thing, because everything will be fine anyway. The stranger said that she was worthy of love in any case. Like all other people, they are separated from this only by narcissism and narcissism, which now permeates everything. People are to blame for their own problems. Hugo von Artina spoke with his son Cedric. The little boy asked his father to rest, because the doctor promised that everything would be fine with his mother. The duke assured his son that he was fine. Cedric said something was bothering him. The boy understood that the father is having a hard time now that his wife went to the maternity hospital seven hours ago, and he hasn't heard the child's cry for a long time. Childbirth is problematic. The doctor and nurses insisted that everything would be fine with the young duchess. There was no threat to her life, but the duke was worried about his wife and future child. A sudden cry rang out. Like thunder in the middle of a clear sky, the child screamed. Alicia Artina called her husband. Both were very happy about the appearance of another child. As they both wanted, they had a girl. The duke rejoiced. Everyone around cried from happiness. Parents promised that even in the most difficult time, they will be there. They had been waiting for this child for a very long time, and therefore they were overjoyed at its appearance. Promises of loyalty poured in from all sides. Father said that when on her life's path, he will sprinkle all her path with flowers. Even if for this it will be necessary to cut all the flowers of this world. The parents thanked the girl for coming to them. The child was truly gifted with the respect and love of everyone around her. No one guessed that this girl was sent to them from the spirit world and reincarnated a second time after death. The girl was already at her parents' house. She looked at the toys hanging above her, but it was very boring for her. She couldn't just lie there and look up at the toys. The maids around wondered why the child was making such strange sounds. They were afraid that something hurt her. And what to do with the children of the Duke's family, none of them had any idea. Both agreed that it was time for her to sleep. The girl was tired of lying around, sleeping, eating, and going to the potty all the time. She remembered the words of a stranger from the spirit world, who said that with each day of a new life the memories would fade. The words about the unity of body and mind were true. Every day her memories and thoughts about her past life became more fragile and more like a dream. The girl was becoming an ordinary child. Each day became similar to the previous one, but it was even better. She was supposed to be completely like a normal child. Besides, everyone around her loved her and worried about her accordingly. Cedric very often went into his sister's room. He was a little nervous that his sister was asleep. The servant said that the child had recently eaten and was just taking a midday nap, as befits babies. The young descendant of the Duke asked the servants not to tell his parents about his frequent visits. He should be in class with the fencing teacher. Instead, he is very interested in looking at his sister. The girl was surprised that Cedric decided to skip fencing lessons for her sake, but it was worth it for her to show herself as a very cute little child at least once. After all, my brother wanted to see it. The girl smiled and the maid saw it. They announced that their ward was the cutest and most beautiful child in the world. They asked the little one to smile at least once more. Ava learned about the Duke's family from the maids. One of the maids said that the master and his two sons wear bracelets made of ordinary threads. Another said that the duke valued the bracelet very much. As soon as he received it, he immediately refused to spar with his knights. Hugo was worried that the bracelet might break. These were the consequences of gossip and bad customs that prevailed in the duchy. People have omens that if you wear a bracelet made of a very thin thread and make sure that it does not break, then you will definitely have a very beautiful, good daughter. And since the duke was really waiting for the appearance of his daughter, it is possible that the omens have some basis. At that time, the eldest son Arkan went to the north. There he had to fulfill the duties of the duke's successor. Everyone was happy that little Ava already had such defenders. More than one lady from the capital was interested in her brothers, and the boys became the object of curiosity of all the surrounding beauties, brides. The little one is very lucky. Both boys showed a steadfast character and preferred discipline and firm rules, which distinguished them from other aristocrats. Each of them was a good candidate for Duke. 
The girl listened to all these conversations and understood that only she was lucky to be born in such a family, as she already had to follow the rules and in the future have a duty to someone in terms of self-sacrifice. The heroine believed that although she did not want a life that would be blooming all the time, like a garden, she did not want to be born into an aristocratic family where she would become the subject of universal attention. She would rather give it up. Later that day, the duke's eldest son, Arkin, visited the estate. He greeted his parents and meekly led a conversation about his own affairs and the circumstances of their lives. The mother rejoiced at the return of her son. Arkin asked if anything strange had happened lately. Parents said that everything is not quite as it was at the time of his departure. The young aristocrat asked if someone had attacked them or why the father was agitated. Father assured that Arkana's sister is very cute. The baby is very similar to the mother, and when she laughs, she becomes very cute. And recently she said the word, Dad. Although her first word was mother, the woman said that their little daughter could not speak yet. Arkin did not understand what happened during the eight months he was absent from his parents' home. His father told him to go to his sister. The boy asked if it was okay to do so until he had reported on his management affairs. But the duke said that family matters came first. Arkin is not used to putting the personal above the state. Cedric approached them. Arkin asked his younger brother about the affairs. He replied that everything is fine. And only then, the elder saw that Cedric had a bundle in his hands. The younger brother asked if Eva was not beautiful. The girl saw that she was not making the right impression on the duke's eldest son. She decided that it was worth using a mysterious technique and cutely raised her hand up, trying to reach her brother. The younger one, who held the girl in his arms, asked the older brother if he would come to his sister. But when he replied that he had business with his father, Cedric assured that he and his sister would wait. Arkin noticed how uncomfortable his younger brother and sister were. He said that he is ready to wait with state affairs, but his face does not show the delight that a small child causes. The family was sitting at the table, and the father asked those present if they did not think that the mother was not the same as she was yesterday. Today, she was even more charming than yesterday. Everyone except Arkna tried to take her in their arms. Cedric said that his father is burdened with management affairs, and therefore he is ready to hold his sister in his arms. But Arkin said that his brother is still too young to hold Eva in his arms, and he will replace him. Mala did not want to eat what was given to her. She held out the food to her father. Everyone was amazed by such an act. They thought that the child wanted to treat Dad. Those present wondered who she really wanted to treat. The girl was preparing to eat a berry that her mother gave her. Mala thought that her life would continue to be the way it is now. In this life, she was satisfied with almost everything. It remained to enjoy. The duke took his daughter in his arms. He said that today they were invited to the emperor's court. The girl really did not want to travel anywhere again. It was uncomfortable for her to do this in this body. An emperor whose name was Carlyle Regulus Arcadia stood in his room and looked at the letter that had recently come to him. The maid informed him that the duke had arrived with his family. His majesty ordered them to pass. The duke congratulated his majesty and assured that the emperor is still a bright sun for the entire empire. The ruler is impressed by the duke's appearance. He was as always perfectly dressed and dignified. The ruler got up from his chair. He said that there was no one else in the room except the two of them, so it was okay to do without formalities. His majesty offered to treat himself to citrus fruits brought from distant lands. The duke asked if he could ask his majesty something. The emperor assured that a person who knows almost no worries can ask him for anything he wants, and all that the emperor can afford to give. The duke asked to be allowed to rent the banquet hall of the imperial court for a certain evening. His majesty asked why the duke needed it. The duke reaffirmed his words. The emperor reminded that the hall was used throughout the centuries for only two things, to celebrate holidays of state importance and every birthday of the emperor. So he wondered why the duke had a hall. The emperor replied that everyone understood perfectly well whose glorious family carried the heavy burden of running the empire on their shoulders. Therefore, none of the aristocrats will be against the fact that he rents the hall for the evening. His majesty was very happy that his most faithful vassal asked him to give a hall for the celebration. Only the love between a demon and a spirit was more funny and interesting. It was interesting. The emperor asked if Arkin had decided to marry someone. The duke asked why he would rent a hall for someone's wedding. 
He had a more valid reason for such a serious request. For this he can use the hall of his own castle. But his daughter's birthday will be in a month. It is for this that he needs to rent a hall for the celebration. His majesty was surprised. After all, the duke was not going to celebrate his wedding day or any anniversary or anniversary. An imperial ballroom is needed to celebrate a child's birthday. But the duke interrupted the emperor. He asked to use the hall one more time. This will happen when his daughter decides to go out into the world for the first time. The emperor stopped him, but the duke was already on his way home. Ava was sleeping. She dreamed of a stranger. It was so warm and blowing well around that she felt maximum pleasure. The man asked her to call him when he woke up. He will wait for it. Ava woke up to the fact that Arkin was standing over her. The girl tried to remember a strange dream, but could not really understand anything. The memory of the past life and all the events disappeared day by day. Arkin said that she had enough sleep. Today was supposed to be an unusual day, and that's why she had almost no chance to sleep today. Her brother wished her a happy birthday. He was proud to be the first to greet his sister. He told her how he specially woke up very early and went to her. A little later, the girl stood in a dress that her mother ordered for her from the best craftsman of the whole empire. Everyone around looked at the baby in delight. Cedric looked at his sister and thought that he should do more fencing. After all, in the future, many duels for the honor of his sister with various nakedness and spunk were to await him. The family gathered for a ball. The boy thought that their family looked very nice. And most of all, his younger sister stood out. The father simply could not take his eyes off the child. Dad asked the girl if he was the first to wish her a happy birthday. When the girl made it clear that Cedric was the first, the duke said that he had prepared the main gift for the girl. He lifted his daughter in his arms and said that now they would go to celebrate the birthday in the imperial hall. The girl was not very happy that she would now go to the hall. After all, it was her birthday. She actually wanted a quiet, peaceful life. And she was forcibly dragged to the imperial court. In her mind, Eva pleaded for someone to calm her family down. The Duchess asked her husband if he had ordered a new carriage. Hugo replied that he had used all kinds of magic to ward off the insects and protect the carriage from the rain and heat. Finally, the Duke's family reached the palace. Everyone present looked at the girl with interest. Without much ado, the guests admitted that Eva is an extremely beautiful child and very sweet and funny. The Duke was pleased with the impression. Some remarked that the girl's hair was as golden as the Duke's. This made the man even more proud of his child. Those present predicted a great future for the little one. Some strangers said that although Eva was a very sweet and beautiful child, it was not worth using the throne room of the imperial court for this. Envy was felt in his words. Some agreed with the man. The place where Eve was supposed to sit was arranged so that His Majesty the Emperor himself could sit there to rest. Even for Duke Arton's family, it was already too much. The butler asked for silence. He said that the solemn part of the event was about to begin now. The Duke and his family will greet everyone present and will have the opportunity to respond to all wishes. Silence reigned around. No one knew what to answer. The message that His Majesty the ruler of the Empire had arrived brought him out of his stupor. The man asked not to pay attention to him. The Emperor said that you should not focus so much on him. He was just nearby and decided to go into the hall to check how things were going here and at the same time, he congratulates his best friend on the birth of a daughter. His Majesty asked the Duke if he planned to remain silent in the future, since he was the organizer of the celebration. Hugo said that he was very grateful to the Emperor for the visit, the greeting and the permission to hold the celebration in this place. Second, he was going to thank the guests who had agreed to pay their respects to his family by their presence and to wish the best for his family. The Duke was sure of his daughter's future. And finally, Hugo said that he really hoped that no one would dare to stand in the way of his daughter and the entire family of Artina, who defends the borders of the empire with their own blood. The emperor praised his friend. He was impressed by the firmness of his character and the strength of his words and promises. His majesty will always stand by the side of this glorious family of Artin. The guests said that it was a great honor to be present at such a celebration, found a very valuable piece of jewelry that has no analogues in this world, during his journey through the Empire of Harvent. No one had ever seen anything like it. And they also presented a tiara in which ancient powerful magic was sealed. 
This was followed by praises in honor of the child who became the beginning of this holiday. Everyone agreed that Eva looked a lot like her mother. The Duke thanked. He wondered if the man was sometimes Count Cherny. But no one paid attention to these words. Everyone thought about the resemblance between Eva's daughter and her mother. The appearance was almost a copy. The girl was bored. She thought the adults were making too much noise, and they talk about completely unrelated things. She wanted it all to be over as soon as possible. Lucius visited the holiday defont. He congratulated the entire Duke's family on the birth of a charming baby girl. The Marquis emphasized that he and Hugo had not seen each other for a long time. Eve did not like the old man. The Marquis begged to excuse him because it was appropriate for him to personally visit the Duke's estate and congratulate him on the birth of his daughter there. But his affairs did not allow him to make such a visit. Herzog assured that there is no reason to apologize. Lately, they still don't receive guests, but the Marquis would simply waste his time. The tension was palpable between the men. The old Marquis emphasized that there was talk in the capital about the visit of the Marquis Cassis to the Duke. But, probably, this was another capital lie, with which they want to quarrel between Lucius and the Duke. The Duke replied that it was not necessary to talk about the visit of the Marquis of Cassis. After all, the Duke's family only accepts the desired Goths, and everyone who comes just like that is sent away with best wishes by the butler. Cedric realized that the atmosphere was heating up. He decided to take Eva and go with her to another room, so that the girl would not be nervous. The Duke's eldest son joined the Bartik with his sister. The younger one asked his brother why his father behaved so strangely with the Marquis. The Duke was usually a very friendly and hospitable host at his feasts. Artan said that the emperor's wife died a year ago. The current crown prince was the next claimant to the throne. A year ago, when the empress died of a severe illness, all power passed to the concubine of the emperor Beneke. And in the higher circles of the aristocracy, rebellious thoughts prevailed. Many wanted to put Prince Edwin on the throne, bypassing the legitimate heir to the throne. And recently the situation has worsened a lot. Crown Prince still has the chance to become emperor. And everyone can see that he has the features of a born emperor and ruler of the country. But the lack of relatives who could prove his claim to the imperial table stood in the way. And everything can end fatally for the prince. Marquis de Font uses the situation to get closer to the crown prince. And when the prince takes his place on the throne, the old marquis will become his favorite. And then he can take the duke's place. And it could be a disaster. That's why he has such a strained relationship with their father. The girl carefully watched everything that was happening around her. However, she suddenly noticed that her vision was deteriorating. But this could not happen at such a young age. Energy raged around the girl. Mala could not understand what had happened. Someone said that she had the Lord's mark, and it was the only living thing that had the Lord's mark. This meant that she was in his favor. Ava understood that the spirit was addressing her. The creature said that thanks to the Lord's gift, the girl could understand their language, although they did not conclude a contract between themselves. Ava's energy was pure, like that of a lord. The spirits were pleased to be with the girl. The atmosphere was pleasant and fresh. In this, she again resembled Vladika. The girl asked who the lord was. The spirit said that thanks to the lord, they exist. Ava remembered the man who gave her a second life. She understood that it was the stranger who caused all these spirits to appear. He ensured their safety and general existence. Vladika controlled all the waters of the worlds. The spirit offered to make a deal with them. The girl did not understand what the deal was about. The creature said that they have been waiting a long time for the girl's body to be ready to fulfill the deal. From now on, the spirits promised her protection. The girl asked how such small creatures could protect her. In her opinion, they themselves will need help. After all, they were like small fish that can be pulled out with a fishing rod. And then she realized that she would be their protector, and they will not make a deal. On the contrary, they will become friends. The spirit said that the legends did not lie. The creature asked to repeat after her, but Eva said that she could not speak yet. This was her problem. The spirit calmed the girl down. The creature simply asked to think about the words of the agreement. Sky and earth fire and water, on that side of the scales, where the foundations of the entire universe stand, the girl's lonely soul was lost. She asked to become her traveling companion. 
For all this, she undertook to become his and give her soul. Since water is the basis of foundations, it is simply worth being a companion. The very foundation of water was filled with energy and therefore could become a sword and a shield. The girl returned to the emperor's hall and her family. She was worried about how people would react to her deal with the spirits. It was necessary to keep all this secret for now. But suddenly she paid attention to the silence that prevailed around her. Ava thought about what had happened during her absence in this hall. Not even a trace remained of the solemn atmosphere. Mother and father acted as if nothing had happened. But it was very recorded. A special mark could be seen on the foreheads of spiritual people and magicians. Only spirits could see this seal. This became especially noticeable at the first contact between the spirit and the person. That is when it is most clear when entering into an agreement. The mark on his forehead lit up with a bright glow for a very short period of time. This was the only time an ordinary person could see the magic seal. This was enough to navigate the world of spirits. Cedric and Arkin held the girl tightly. They seemed to be trying to protect her from those present. Ava understood that something had happened that caused panic and surprise among the guests. The brothers will not give it to both. The younger of the brothers shouted that the guests had no right to look at his sister like that. They didn't even have the right to raise their eyes. And then they asked the little girl how she was feeling. Why, she could not give a clear answer. The Duke could not believe that his daughter had received the spirit seal. After all, she was too young for that. She just turned one year old. But everyone around said with one voice that she did receive a seal. The emperor asked for a moment of silence. He said that not everything is so clear-cut. The flash and mark on the forehead of the young daughter of the Athena family was not necessarily a magical mark. Besides, she definitely couldn't make a deal with the spirits. It was definitely not up to the child. That is what he and most of the aristocrats present thought. The emperor asked the duke if there were still such signs in the duke's family, and the duke said that this had not happened for a long time. His majesty said that in this way the spirits bless the whole empire. He asked to take Eva in his arms. The brothers were clearly against it, but they could not deny the emperor himself his request. The duke asked how his majesty felt. After all, not everyone present accepted his words, and to some extent, the man discredited himself in the eyes of the aristocracy, which was not unambiguous in its attitude towards him. The emperor reacted very harshly. He asked the duke if he really believed that his majesty was not in himself. He informed everyone that the neighboring countries were saying that the guardian spirits had left their empire, and it was impossible to allow such conversations. After all, when the neighbors are sure of this, they can decide to go to war against the weak and then the empire will be forced to wage war, which may end in the empire's demise. The brothers did not give up. They still closed the sister from the ruler of the state. They could not obey his order. The girl could not understand what happened and how she should behave with this man. Suddenly she realized that the emperor should rule her father, and the well-being of their family had to depend on this. And this was very important in her new world. Therefore, such a source should not be neglected. The girl asked for the hand of the emperor. The man was overjoyed. He did not expect that this action was a cunningly planned action aimed at preserving the well-being of her family. The emperor was delighted with the girl. He was sure that Ava recognized her father's best friend. His majesty thanked the girl. Although she herself did not understand that she had done something important, she did not need it. The main thing is that the required effect has been achieved. The emperor asked the little girl if she would help his prince preserve the future of the state. All this caused great and deep anger in the old marquis. His majesty asked if everyone had seen this sign. The man said that finally, after many years of absence, a mage was born in their country. Now they had a person who could come into contact with the spirits of nature and help this state. All the inhabitants of the empire had to learn about this. From the next day, his majesty promised to organize a festival which was to last three days, in honor of the birth of the spiritual magician. Everyone around, regardless of political orientation, rejoiced at the appearance of the long-awaited magician. For the third day, the duke and his wife watched the celebration organized in honor of the birth of the spirit mage, who was their own daughter. But the duke himself remembered the war with demons. The scars from her were still quite fresh. Even a child in the empire 
knew that the complete opposite of a demon was a spirit mage. And thus, the appearance of a spirit mage was a good sign for the safety of the entire empire. It was a very significant event for the whole country. The woman noticed the anxiety on her husband's face. The duke assured that he was only concerned about whether he could protect his daughter from all those who would try to harm her. The spirit mage. She became a target for demonic forces. The strength and abilities of the daughter were manifested in the banquet hall in front of everyone present. Now almost all aristocratic families know about Ava, and many will want to remove such an opponent from the country's political game. Their daughter was not just a very pretty child. She still possessed extraordinary powers. The impression was that all capital mass just need to tear out their tongues and eyes. The mother suggested placing knights as bodyguards with her daughter. Otherwise, a brainless bunch of people might do something bad to their daughter. The duke could not believe that someone would try to harm his daughter. But still, the husband agreed to his wife's proposal. He decided it was worth summoning the people he had been trying to forget. It seemed that the parents were very reluctant to resort to the services of knights. The young man who was hunting the monster turned to his friend. He talked about the fact that now a group of knights is being selected to guard the young daughter of the Duke of the Arton family. It was Harold, the Knight of Arton. His friend Twain also belonged to the knights who served the faith and truth of the family of Arton. The guy said he refused such an honor. Harold said that hard times would soon come for them. After all, opponents are becoming fewer and fewer. His friend agreed. But he believed that the capital was also boring. They are used to constant tension and battle. Although people say that the little one is very similar to the Duchess, who was considered a real beauty. Another of the knights joined them. His name was Alec, and he offered to give their hostess a gift. He took in his hands the head of the monster they had just killed, and said that if dried, it would make a beautiful ornament. The knights of Arton were considered such strong opponents that even the imperial court did not have such a force. They had no equal in the entire empire. Instead of the peace of the capital, they preferred the constant struggle with demons. However, they did not become famous for this. Duke Arton himself drove them north to face the onslaught of demons. After all, the conditions have been created for this. The knights became dangerous for others. It was a forced measure. The knights really disliked everything related to the country's past. They thoughtlessly destroyed everything related to the old regime. However, their main purpose was to fight against higher demons. According to all ordinary citizens of the empire, and not for nothing, by the way, among all the military units of the state, there was no such bloody and dangerous formation as the knights of the Arton family. They were feared, but also respected. The knights arrived at the palace of the Artina family. They were greeted by a butler who spoke on behalf of the host, but the soldiers stopped him. The knights knew the butler and were surprised that he had not changed over the years. Haldel replied that he was glad to see them. Someone from the old comrades drew attention to Haldel's eyes. They asked if he had a girlfriend. After all, his look rather indicated that the girl had abandoned him. Dvoretsky asked God for endurance and will. Ten years ago he was transferred from the knights to the butler, and he did not want his present and future to be in jeopardy because of past dubious merits. The knights did not lag behind their former comrade-in-arms. Knights are not used to life in peaceful cities. They immediately started thinking about dinner. One of the knights offered to hunt a small grasshopper, which they saw on the way to the castle. But his comrades protested. They didn't think that it was somehow illegal, or that they don't do that in cities. They were frightened by the fact that the Duchess herself was engaged in breeding horses, and therefore she protected all of them, and the killing of a small foal could lead to a scandal. Dvoretsky understood that control over the actions of his former comrades was now on him. He mentally asked the master why he had recalled these ignorant people from the far north, where they should continue to fight against demonic forces. The girl ran up to Hoddel. She did not immediately notice the knights, so she asked the butler if he had heard a suspicious squeak. And when her attention caught the group of knights, she immediately became interested in them. Hamel asked to stay away from these knights, whom he almost called thugs. The butler explained that the knights had sworn allegiance to the duke and now served his family. The girl looked at the knights with wide eyes. One of the knights introduced himself as Twain and said that he would become her personal bodyguard. But the men began to try to win the attention of the duke's daughter in front of each other. 
Everyone was bragging about their skills, but the main priority for Eva was the ability to tell fairy tales. It was such a master and not a sword master that the girl agreed to give preference in case of a choice. Although one of them even offered her the dried head of an orc, the knights began to quarrel among themselves, pointing out each other's shortcomings. They did not notice how Eva moved away from their group. She thought it was too loud, and her father will still independently appoint her personal bodyguard. Later, the girl will approach one of the knights and give him a berry that she will pick in the garden. At that time, the soldier was thinking that his march to the north was coming to an end. He spent almost his entire life in those regions, in the fight against evil. The duke himself approached the group of knights. He was glad that his loyal knights had arrived at the castle. The noblemen thanked them for their faithful service and help in the war against demons and their followers. Nevertheless, he asked to report on the latest events. The knights bowed their heads to their commander-in-chief. It was an honor for them to serve the Duke of Astana himself. But suddenly they heard a squeak. The Duke could not make such a sound. And so there was only one thing left. The young daughter of the Duke visited the knights. All the men's attention instantly switched to the girl. The Duke tried to shout at the soldiers who had forgotten what discipline was. But the guards wanted to hear the girl again. Dvoretsky thought about the fact that it was about to start here soon. After all, only one person needs to be selected for the role of personal bodyguard, and that's why a fight had to start soon, because there was simply no other solution. Exactly one month later, the knights were training on the grounds near the Duke's palace. The girl went to the training ground and ordered a break in classes. One of the guards asked what the girl was doing in this place. Eva opened the handbag that she always prepared for long trips. Goodies started falling out of the bag. The contents of the bag were not very suitable for adventure, the knight thought. It was more like an ordinary picnic. But the forced men said that their commander's daughter had prepared very well. They were forced to do this by the fact that they all loved the little girl. Eva filled the bag correctly. After all, the knights were going to take everything else anyway. Drick approached the group. He said that the little sister can't travel alone anyway although in the presence of knights who trained their skills in the north of the state. The girl was happy that there were more and more of them. The knights, in turn, said that they were ready to hunt down even the demon king for the sake of the princess. The girl was interested and scared at the same time. But before that, one of the guards asked her to listen to a fable about the adventures of their unit. But the duke prevented him from telling the story. He told his knights that his daughter's head should not be killed unnecessarily, and it's better for them to return to training at the training ground. After all, you never know where danger is coming from. And the soldiers decided to joke. They said that the Duke did not notice how the young princess was attacked by the letter. Everyone laughed, and the father was faced with the question of who to make his daughter's personal bodyguard. The question of which of the knights would be worthy to continue guarding the Duke's daughter remained open, and the girl suddenly said herself that she would personally make a decision, or it will affect him. The girl approached the youngest of the knights amidst the general silence and took his hands. Eva said that he would protect her from intruders and keep her calm. The guy was surprised no less than the others. Two boys were standing in a palace room. Everything around was bathed in moonlight. The blonde asked how the boy with the black hair was feeling. He replied that everything is fine, but he has a bad feeling. His partner said that he is still very young, but there is a positive point in this namely that there is room for further growth. The blonde asked to take care of Ava. The father asked the guard not to break his promise. The knight ran through the night forest. He lost his footing and fell. A crowd of men stood before him. One of them turned to the knight and told him that it must be very difficult to kill small children. But why did he think he could escape? Besides, killing a child is not his personal whim, but an order. Orders, as you know, are not discussed. The men told the group that they treated the orphan well, and he wanted to set them up so badly. The next memory was the duke. He stood in front of the boy and held a sword in his hands, with which he most likely drove away the boy's companions. The aristocrat said that he would be able to forgive the boy and would give him one more chance to make amends. Now the boy became a knight and was able to get the status of personal bodyguard of the duke's daughter. Duke Higo's kindness and generosity made it possible to become a normal, respected person in society. And instead of becoming a simple hired killer, which was destined for him, 
he became a soldier of the empire, its defender. He fought against demons and all their minions. He could be proud of his status. The knight considered the duke to be his personal god. He had so much power and influence. And that's why he swore his loyalty to Eve without thinking too much. His sword and soul belonged entirely to the little mistress. Ava was woken up by her brother. He said it was quite late to sleep. The sun rose high and hummed to everyday activities and games. The girl was sleepy and argued with the boy in an effort to win at least some time to sleep. The boy said that only small children lie in bed for so long every morning. The girl wanted to answer him, but the knight entered the room in time. The security guard said that the little girl had recently been bragging that she was an adult girl. The girl had an ambiguous attitude towards her brother. She asked Cedric to teach her how to fight. But later, Eva asked her brother for help. Cedric joked that the girl had recently talked about her adulthood. The girl excused herself that in the morning she was small, but in the evening she was already an adult. And now it was morning, so it must be said that she is still very young and has the right to her whims. And everyone around pressed her cheeks and talked about how small she was. The girl was holding an envelope in her hands. She could not understand what it was and how it got into her hands. The brothers looked at each other mysteriously. Inside was an invitation in the name of Evelyn von Artina. The girl attacked the knight who was attached to her as a bodyguard. The man was frightened by the sudden attack, and Eva at that moment showed him the invitation in her name. The knight saw that it was an invitation from Marquis Cassis. The knight said that since ancient times the family of Cassis was famous for many magicians. They were very powerful and served as a reliable support for the ruling dynasty, for which she always had all kinds of preferences. The current Marquis of Cassis was a faithful comrade in arms of the current emperor. Also, the Marquis is on very good terms with the Duke himself. All of them went through various trials together, and there they hardened their friendship. The Herald decided to play a joke on his mistress. He asked Ava who he would play with when she left. The girl answered very seriously that the knight was already an adult, and it was not appropriate for him to behave like that, and she stomped her foot menacingly, adding that he is already at such an age that he can play by himself without help. And Eva was waiting for Harold to grow up. The man was upset when he realized that the girl read him. A few days later, Eva and her parents were on their way. They planned to visit the duke's old friend, the Marquise of Cassis, as a group. The knight said goodbye to the girl. Ava herself promised to return soon, but the herald finally asked to show everyone what they had learned together recently. The girl said that she remembered everything and was ready to repeat it. The guard asked what she was going to do when the demon attacked. The girl was not lost. The first step should be to instill fear in the enemy. She did it very sweetly. Everyone around was very happy and simply melted from the amount of cuteness per square centimeter. The Herald decided that an attack on their procession on the way by demons would be an impossible thing. Therefore, it is better to act out the case when a stranger approaches the girl and offers to go to dinner together or something else. The girl is fed up. She said that when someone comes to her, she will definitely kick him between the legs, and that's the end of the matter. The knight praised his capable student, but the girl's legs were still short. And finally, she added that when she was dragged somewhere, she would scream. She will call for help from her loyal knights. And they, as faithful vassals of the hostess, will certainly rush to help. The duke was pleased with what the knights had taught his daughter. He realized that time was not wasted. But the woman was not sure that the girl was taught good things. And that is why it is worth limiting communication with security. But the duke thought otherwise. He praised everyone who helped train his daughter. And for today, he promised rest. Everyone was free today and could go about their business. The Duchess believed that the man was wrong. He was completely losing his mind when it came to his beloved daughter. And the knights made the woman even more angry. They were supposed to be submissive and obedient, but now, on the contrary, they start fooling around and pampering themselves. This time they will be accompanied by Karen and Eden. These were quite young knights, with almost no experience of serious skirmishes with the enemy. Everyone fought around the line to guard the Duke's little daughter. The woman thought that she would breastfeed when Eva became an adult. The road seemed far. The girl was very sad. She constantly demanded something. Various toys and household items came into her field of vision, which aroused curiosity. 
Dad immediately ordered to find a toy. Although Eva herself said that she just wanted to show how healthy the toy bear and other toys were, this calmed the girl at least a little and distracted her from the boring swaying of the carriage. Over time, she got used to it. In her free time, she had a friend with whom she had lunch. A toy bear, the size of the princess herself, was always by her side when she was eating. They hung out together, they played together, and had an interesting time. According to the girl, this toy bear was a jack of all trades. She was very happy when she had the opportunity to play with the toy, but the same fate awaited him as all the other toys. He will simply add to their collection. Ava was afraid of the place they were going to. She kept asking if she could make friends there, and under no circumstances did she want to let the bear out of her hands. It was her last leaflet. Apart from relatives, of course, the brothers said that there would be more children in the palace besides them, and therefore she will definitely find friends there with whom she will have fun. The girl was overjoyed at such prospects. She just glowed with happiness. Her father's fame was as great as it was difficult. However, it ensured the prosperity of the Artin family and the blessing of all its neighbors and the aristocracy of the empire. Many wanted to side with the duke and take advantage of the fame. For the sake of accidental gain, people were ready to trick, if only it would help them cope with the troubles that fell on their heads. Many understood that you can't take the duke by trickery, and that's why they started openly fighting. And the duke realized that finding a friend in such a situation is like groping for a star in a bag of pebbles. The father hoped that her daughter's star would not suffer. At that time, Eva was thinking about the friends she would make here. The duke hoped that the truth about this world would not be able to break his daughter. The values that the duke thought about and professed did not prevail everywhere. His wife had long been showing signs of serious decline. A strange man came out to meet the duke and his family. He talked about how long it had been. It was hard to even remember because it was really long ago, and he missed the duke and his company so much. The man said he held back with all his might, and now he brought his whole family. The stranger emphasized that it was full of living creatures, unlike the duke's castle. And this is another proof that Hugo missed him. The man said that he wanted to see the duke's daughter more than his lordship himself. After all, he heard about the beauty of the little daughter, and even if he came to visit, she would be hidden from him. The girl bowed. She congratulated Marquis Cassius and wished magical power and prosperity for his family, and all the things started and just planned. The spirit mage was surprised by how quickly the girl grew. The man recommended his children. He had a charming daughter and an already grown-up son. The boy's name was Icrian Cassis. He said that he is very glad to meet you and hopes for reciprocity. Evie liked the boy. He took the little girl's hand and leaned in for a kiss. The son of the Marquis once again thanked for the fact that such guests visited their estate. However, the feeling was that one unreliable movement and a bloodbath would begin. Already in the carriage, the Duke said that the girl was not obliged to get close to the descendants of Marquis Cassius. The father said that the boy was a real bully. He didn't let anyone through so as not to offend or make fun of him in some way. Ava understood who the boy reminded her of. He was like a sly fox, who was lying in wait and waiting for a new victim. And the speech of this fox was so sweet that it was immediately mesmerizing. The girl decided to stay away from him. The Marquis asked his daughter if she would dare to say hello to the good guest. The girl looked like her father. She seemed a little frightened. The daughter of the Marquis was called Lillian. She sincerely said that she hopes for friendship. It was very important for Eva. Finally, one of the children offered her sincere friendship. The Marquis said that his daughter was in poor health, and therefore she had few friends, and she rarely sees them. And that's why the girl will be very happy if the Duke's daughter becomes her friend. Loyalty and devotion Lillian can fully provide. The girl herself was worried whether the Duke's daughter would want to be friends with her. Her self-esteem was very low, and she believed that she was not worth being around. But Eva herself took her hand and said that from now on they are friends. Lillian's happiness knew no bounds. Finally, someone honestly told her this. Ava believed that sometimes you don't need any reason to become best friends. After all, when a person is good, everything goes by itself. In the future, they will often remember this moment when they found each other. At this amazing moment, their eyes met. They intuitively felt affection for each other. And since then, they became friends forever. 
The girls were not mistaken. This moment left an imprint on the rest of their lives. Finally, the guests and the host sat down at the table. Little Lillian tried in every possible way to please her new friend, or simply take care of her. Lillian called her friend officially, but Eva said to call her by her name. The son of the Marquis watched all this. He said that now he understands what everyone around him is talking about, and who everyone is praising and openly admiring. He seemed to be ashamed of his actions and cruel jokes. The boy was impressed by the girl's beautiful golden hair, and her eyes were the color of the ocean, which the little one liked so much. The girl really gave the impression that she was a favorite of the spirits. She was very different from his sister. The boy compared her to a little star. But Ava's brothers broke him from his thoughts. They told him to stay away from their baby sister, or he would end up in the spirit realm much faster. The son of the Marquis assured them that they could not worry. After all, he loved women older than him. After all, it was better and more interesting with them than with a small child who still doesn't really know how to do anything. The guys didn't understand what he was talking about. But Icrian said he felt very sorry for the poor fellow who should fall in love with their sister. After all, then he will have to deal with both brothers and a constant headache on this basis. The boys assured that they would not allow Eve to be offended. The son of the Marquis did not undertake to predict the lives of the boys, but it seemed to him that Archon's life would always hang in the balance. He will become a very strong warrior and conquer many lands and win many victories. The Marquis's butler invited the guests to go to the garden, where a beautiful picnic was organized for the Duke's family. The picnic was organized for adults only. The child was crying loudly because they wanted to go to the garden. Ava's brothers decided to go practice fencing because they hadn't trained in a long time. Both were glad that such a good thought came to her head. In addition, you need to distract yourself from the cries of the little ones. The girls decided to stay with Cedric and Arkin. It was interesting for them to watch their sparring. Idric wanted to draw attention to himself. He wanted to manipulate his sister, reminding her that she had never left him in her life. The son of the Marquis said that they could call on him at the slightest need. He is always ready to help. But Eva said she could fend for herself. She learned something from the knights who were supposed to protect her. The girl's brothers broke into the conversation. They asked that there be no self-dealing, but simply let them know that something has happened or is not going as it should. It was not necessary to go to extremes. The butler could not say anything to the children of the aristocracy. He just hoped that their fun would not go anywhere beyond the usual sparring. The young ladies did not want to see blood today on such an unusual day. Lillian still could not believe in the beauty of her friend. The girl was really very beautiful, and the duke's daughter's hair shone like gold. God did not deprive this little pretty girl of beauty. You could even be jealous. A girl approached the girls on the path. She said her name was Morrigan Karen. She was the daughter of Count Karen. After her, all the other girls began to introduce themselves. Evie got tired of this noise very quickly. Ava's new acquaintances invited her to tea when she was near their manors or estates. The girl was actually very angry at the fact that everyone rushed at her like that. Eva decided to fight off annoying acquaintances. A beautiful girl with ashen hair came out to Eva from a bunch of unfamiliar girls. She greeted politely and not too obtrusively. She recommended herself as Ceres, the daughter of Marquis de Font. She was the first girl who made an impression on Eva. Cerbera reminded that it is very uncultured to make such a fuss about one's own person. Evie had to calm those present and calm their nerves. The girl said that Evie was too young to understand etiquette. Ceres promised to help her in this matter. In this way, the girl received support and a mentor in the person of an older girl, the daughter of a wealthy and respectable family. Etiquette classes were supposed to start right now. If several unfamiliar guests greet each other at the same time and try to introduce themselves, then you need to turn to each one and listen to them. Evie wondered why she was listening to all this, but Ceres simply noted that the girl did not know much, but it was not worth being ashamed of. After all, Evie's age is still very young. It is rare to meet a well-behaved and decent child at that age. In addition, when no one brings her up according to the status, the girl did not pay attention to the lessons. She tried to remember where she had heard this strange surname. And then the hall of the Imperial Palace and her birthday appeared before her eyes. That was the name of the slimy guy who tried to anger his father. 
And then Evie realized that the girl was an exact copy of her father, and the girl thought that she got a savior. But fate was not so kind to her, and this meeting could only lead to new conflicts. Cerbera thought that this girl had taken her place. Previously, everyone admired her, Ceres. At that time, she was the daughter of a very influential person who was aiming for a place next to the emperor himself. Everyone was talking about her. The aristocracy prophesied a great future for her. She had to become the first beauty at all social events. In addition, she was close to all members of the imperial family, perhaps even the wife of the future emperor herself. But almost two years ago, when Eva celebrated her first birthday, everyone present at the event saw how beautiful the child of the duke and his wife was, and it was then that Ceres lost hope in her plans. The girl was thinking about Eva. This child was just an ordinary child. She had no extraordinary abilities. Her body was small and did not even give a hint of her future figure or beauty in general, and Ceres herself thought that this girl would soon disappear. After all, Artin's family was soon to be engulfed in great misfortune, as her father had told her about. He was a fierce enemy of this family, and therefore was an implacable fighter with it. And then, waiting for the right time, Cerberus must control and manage the girl as she pleases. But Artin's knights could prevent this, as they had to protect their suzerain in any case. Among the metropolitan aristocracy, there were rumors that these knights had fled the battlefield and left the northern provinces at the mercy of the enemy. That is, they were ordinary deserters, and everyone around them paid their respects. Eve heard everything that was said about the knights of Ceres. The duke's daughter was not going to leave things as they were. She will never allow the honor of her knights, bodyguards to be tarnished. The girl summoned the power of the spirit of water. Calling the spirit by its name, Undine, the girl released part of her original nature. No one expected that the girl would be able to raise water and direct it at her opponents. The girls looked at Eva in surprise. Amelia looked at her enemy. She was not going to apologize for her words. Said about the knights of her house. Although Ceres belonged to one of the strongest clans in the Empire, she has no right to speak like that about the guards. It is not known where the dark energy came from. She raged around the girls. Both were very scared. Over time, the outline of people or human-like beings emerged from the circle. The monster slowly rose from the ground. The children were scared. Everything around was shrouded in crimson fog, from which red eyes looked at the children. The boy, Eva's brother, understood that it was Dantalion. And then Eva mentioned that demons are divided into two categories in their hierarchy. Ordinary demons were very different from their relatives, who belonged to the 72 Lemigaton demons, who possessed extraordinary power. Ordinary demons were in the latter in the role of faithful and obedient servants. However, Lace does not obey 72. Why were they called apostates? They are completely banished from the demon lands. As a result, they had to feed on scraps and all that was left for them. They were not conscious. They did not have the opportunity to engage in self-reflection. Fear was unknown to them because of their primitiveness. The only thing that motivates them is the desire to tear and destroy everything that stands in their way. The monster rushed at young Eve. But an unknown girl from among those standing around pushed the duke's daughter away, and she did not fall into the claws of the creature, but fell to the ground. Ava did not know whether to be angry with her or to be happy, but she was serious. Undine responded instantly to her call. At the last moment, the girl wondered if the monster would eat her water spirit. Meanwhile, the demon was thrashing furiously and making sounds that would befit a wild beast. The girl shouted loudly to all her relatives and did not forget about her personal knights. Bodyguards. She hoped that the rage would help strengthen her spirit. The monster sensed her intent and strength. Eva seemed to be stronger than her opponent, but at the last moment, Cedric still came to her aid. He protected the girl from the dark emanation that was moving in her direction. The father asked how his daughter was feeling. Everyone rushed to the girls. The brothers and those around them were very frightened by the attack of the enemy. No one expected to meet a demon right in the middle of the Marquis' lands. He got here for sure, not just like that. This required magical cover. Cedric commanded. He ordered everyone to get away from the battle site and hide in a safe hiding place. The son of the Marquis stood in front of Cedric. He ordered not to interfere, 
but to simply use his magic to fight the monster. The duke's son understood that there were about a dozen Dantalians nearby, and they can resist a maximum of two. That is, you need to call reinforcements. Otherwise, their resistance will just drag on time, but in the end, they will all die. The duke came to the rescue. Around him seemed to be an aura of golden light. The man seemed to be burning brightly from the inside. It seemed that his very appearance was meant to kill demons of various levels, not just drive them away. Mothers and older women ran to the children. They still could not seriously assess the situation and the danger that awaited their children. The children screamed and rushed to their mothers. Everyone did not understand how the demons got into the Marquise's estate. The Duke looked at his daughter. He could not believe his eyes when he saw a bruise on Eva's hand. And it was at this moment that his head turned off. He decided to kill all the vile demons, not paying attention to the children and women nearby. The battle shawl was completely mastered by the Duke. He seems to have lost his mind and temporarily became one of the demons himself. At least, his cruelty indicated just that. He shouted and cursed at the attackers, but cut them skillfully. After the battle, the children and everyone present asked the Duke how it could happen that demons broke into the estate of one of the strongest spirit magicians. In their time of civilization and measured calm, it was altogether strange and unexpected. The knights came to the aid of their suzerain. They burned with a desire for revenge when they were told that demons had attacked the Duke's young daughter. The Duke could not tell what his knights would do when the enemies were defeated. After the Duke went to visit the Marquis, there was unrest among the knights. They could not understand why their master had ordered them to stay at the ancestral estate instead of guarding it on the road. And then, one of the knights said that before leaving, Eva wanted to take a plush bunny with her, and everyone as one decided to go to a store that sold toys. But they remembered the Duke's order, which forbade them to follow him. Without thinking long, they decided to just bring the toy under the walls of the Marquis' estate and just throw the hair over the fence. In this way, they will not deviate one iota from the essence of their master's order. The knights arrived at the scene. But they could not see their mistress anywhere. Uneasiness and a premonition of something not good at all began to grow among them. Finally, they reached the fence, near which they met Karen. The knight could not believe that his brothers had decided to violate the duke's order. This could entail very serious consequences for the entire knightly order. But they were interrupted by someone's cry. It became clear that some trouble had befallen the duke's family and everyone else present. Then, everyone just beat the demons who dared to attack the young lady Eva. The knights blamed the other guards of the manor for allowing the attack. The duke was ashamed of his men. But he didn't blame anyone but himself. After all, he himself did not believe that these fools would obey his order. Those present were surprised how quickly the guards dealt with the demons. The girls looked in love at the brave knights of Arton, who so valiantly dealt with the monsters. Ava cried. She could not recognize the knights. The girl thought that these were not the knights she knew so well. The duke watched this scene. However, his thoughts were on the question of who had summoned the demons to his best friend's manor, and the demons were specially summoned to the garden where the children were walking. That is, Everything was planned in advance, and this someone knew very well that the children would be separated from the adults, who would go to the picnic separately, leaving the little one alone. But the main target of the attackers was undoubtedly his precious and capable daughter. The girl clung to the knight and said that it was necessary to summon Undine. It is the spirit that can pinpoint the one who summoned the cruel blood demons to the garden with the children. Justice had to be restored. The spirit was angry because Eve called her name very loudly. Calm down a little. The spirit said that she had found the culprit of all this. The spirit pointed to a man in a suit. He denied his guilt. He tried to justify himself by saying that he goes to church every week. For help, he asked to summon priests who could confirm his words. But no one believed him. The duke thought about punishing the man. Communication with demons was punished most seriously. It was a crime that had not been forgiven since the last war between humans and demons. All were punished right at the place where they were caught. The only sentence is death. Hugo wondered if he should do justice right now or send the culprit to the imperial court. Perhaps the interrogators will have questions about this man, and the emperor himself will be satisfied. The duke thought that it would not be out of place to visit an old friend. He also ordered the guards to arrest Count Maline. 
a girl turned to Hugo. She asked to hear her before passing judgment on the Count. The girl said that when the demons materialized, Lady Artina tried to move back and hide from the killers. However, Count Molyneux's daughter pushed the girl straight at the demons. Miraculously, Eva flew away. The Count's daughter denied it. She stated in all seriousness that the young lady Artina simply tripped and fell by accident. And the girl, on the contrary, tried to get into the front rows and help the small and frightened Eva. The spirit declared that the girl was lying. Everyone saw this betrayal very well. The girl, the Count's daughter, specially pushed Eva right into the clutches of the demonic creatures. Many spirits are ready to witness this event. Herzog said the daughter and father acted in unison. The father summoned the demons to the children's garden, and the daughter tried to get rid of Lady Artina. Everyone was overcome with rage and hatred for traitors who deal with demons. Later, it turned out that the Marquis had conspired in the Count's betrayal. He promised that when Lillian became Empress, Molyneux would receive the title of Marquise or Duke. The only condition is the murder of Artina's little daughter. The Duke ordered the night guard to take Eva and the other child to safety. But later, the girl's father added that the bodyguard would leave Lady Defont and Lady Moline. A separate conversation will be held with them to finally complete everything. Brother took the girl to the room, but Eva could not calm down. For some reason, she felt sorry for the girls who tried to kill innocent children for their own interests. My brother assured me that everything would be fine. Arkin explained that if he and the other knights had not come to help in time, then this conversation might not be happening now. And even if the duke does not punish the guilty, Arkin himself is ready to do it with the guilty. And even if their father couldn't handle his anger now, he still wouldn't have any condemnation from anyone in the empire. After all, there was a clear category of punishments for challenging and cooperating with demons. The knights followed their master's order. One of them swung his sword wide and struck a precise blow that quickly and painlessly ended the lives of the traitors. The Marquise could not bear to look at it. Perhaps feeling guilty, the Duke put the sharp end of his sword to the Marquise's throat. Hugo was too angry to make rational decisions. However, now it was about something completely different. The Marquis de Font was to be hanged without trial. The Marquis were asked to explain everything, but first to take the sword from his throat. But suddenly he started playing strong, implying that the Duke had no evidence against him. And that's why the Duke can't kill him right here and now. Hugo leaned over to the Marquis and said that he should be more careful in the future. The laws of the Empire do not allow us to deal with a rebellious traitor right now, who was a threat to others by his actions. Finally, the Duke added that human life is not always open to laws. Sometimes there are times when very terrible things happen. The Marcus said that Hugo would not dare to harm his family. Herzog assured that this was not the case. The owner of the estate asked to forgive him. He did not follow the guests and those who huddled among them. With his actions, he endangered the lives of the descendants of the Arten family and many other aristocratic families. The Marquis bowed low to the Duke. But he reassured his friend, because sooner or later it had to happen. Too many people know about his daughter's gift. But in the future, such events were not supposed to frighten children and wound their souls. The next day, Eva and Lillian were playing in the garden. Both were extremely happy that they had the opportunity to become friends like this. Eva said that she saw a bunny in the bushes and offered to follow him and play. The knights kept up with the girls. As a group, they offered to catch a bunny for such pretty girls. Leland was ashamed and turned away. Eva ordered not to interfere in their game, but just wait until they warm up. And before the soldiers had time to come to their senses, the girl rushed headlong into the forest, where such a desirable and cherished bunny was hiding. The girl did not pay attention to the fact that she was shouted at. She is completely absorbed in the game. While playing, the girl came across a handsome black man with an earring in his ear. The man asked why this little one decided to sleep with him, and asked to be more careful. The stranger had a suspicious look. He asked how she was even able to find him. Eva asked who he was. The man smiled and asked if she really didn't know him. And then the girl realized that a demon was in front of her. He was too perfect. The girl asked if he was a devil. But the demon was offended. He asked that normal demons should never be compared to demons. It was too offensive for someone like him. In addition, he was one of the 72 main demons. The girl looked at the demon, 
who was bragging about his position in the hierarchy. Ava thought about how she should act. At first glance, the man did not pose a threat to her. She tried her best to remember what she had learned with the knights. The girl remembered how she had to scare the demon. She diligently pretended to be bad and evil. But the demon did not buy her trick. He asked in surprise if she really belonged to the beastmen. However, she had no ears. Claws were also not visible. There is no wool cover. There was no tail either. The girl said that she is a real lady. The demon asked why she was making such a funny joke then. The girl said it must have been a cry of anger and rage. The demon just laughed at her. The girl asked what funny thing she said. But the demon joked that when demons are afraid, they always laugh really hard. Eva believed it. She thought the demon was too serious. The girl moved away from the first impression and asked what the name of the demon was. The man wanted to answer, but stopped. You couldn't just give your names to people you didn't know. After all, you can lose your freedom. No one knew that all this preceded a great friendship. Not everyone will understand it. Many will be against it. Some will talk about betrayal. After all, many people remembered the great war with demons, which took the lives of many inhabitants of the continent. The demon looked at the girl carefully. He could hear the voices of the guards looking for the lady. The stranger understood that before him was the successor of the Artin family. Under normal circumstances, he should have just killed her. But now, the situation is completely different. The man knelt in front of her. He asked what her name was. The girl answered that, Amelia. The demon asked if he had heard correctly. The girl was offended that someone dared to spoil her name. The demon asked to keep their meeting a secret. The man asked her to keep their meeting a secret. And if someone asks what she was doing, let her answer that she saw a bunny. And the demon just melted into the air, as if there was nothing anywhere. Brothers and guards ran up to Eva. Everyone was frightened by her absence. The brothers asked why she acted so thoughtlessly, especially considering the recent events and summoning demons to kill her. The girl remembered what the demon asked her. She said she was just chasing a bunny, and she went so far that she did not hear her being called. Eva promised that she would not do that again. The demon was still secretly watching the girl. Vaughn saw everything as if from above and a little blurry, but he heard Ava's words that the bunny was very beautiful, and she hopes that they will see the bunny more than once. The supreme demon himself came to this place in order to look at the consequences of the draft Lasellians. This has not happened for a long time. The last time was before the Great War. Thoughts that it was still boring here made the demon sleep. He believed that he was already very old and ancient, and therefore he had the right to rest under the tree in peace and quiet. No one was to disturb him. Agares, the demon who ranked second in the hierarchy of the supreme seventy-two demons, recalled a daring encounter with the girl. He immediately felt that the girl was not ordinary, and they will definitely meet. The maids at home were worried about how the girl was feeling. They heard about her disappearance this afternoon, and that's why they worried that nothing would happen to her. They didn't want to go into the room because she could be sleeping. The maid brought the girl to a room where there were a lot of toy bears. These were all gifts from the knights. Eva was angry because there was too little space for her behind the toys. The girl played with dolls and offered the maid to distribute toys to children who would need them. But Ava just didn't want it all in her room. Although in my heart, I was thinking about disadvantaged children. In the spring, a bunny appeared to the girl. He took the form of the demon she had seen during the day. Avelia was happy, because she had been thinking about their meeting all day, and he said that he decided to visit his girlfriend. The girl, who was sleeping and smiling at the curtain, was watched by the Lord of Water and Spirits. Before meeting this girl, he had dealt with people only once, and in almost every dimension, people were selfish and self-obsessed. He was allowed to see the essence of the soul of all living beings, because he possessed a spiritual power that permeated the entire universe and all possible dimensions where there were living beings and nature. He often visited the human world out of boredom, but I saw almost the same thing everywhere. People chased after small material pleasures and could not fully satisfy their growing desires. Most people's souls were black and distorted, but the bishop also did not reject the fact that he could simply be biased towards them. Over the centuries, he developed a distrust of these creatures. He looked more and more at the technological progress that flooded the world. People have become too primitive, 
compared to previous centuries, and it was unusual to meet a girl with faith in the spiritual world and spirits. The girl impressed him with the way she rushed to save the water spirit. The very idea was absurd, but the essence of the act was important. A person is ready to sacrifice his life not for the sake of wealth, but for the sake of life. And the water spirit asked to help her. Spiritual beings have always respected balance and equilibrium. Undine asked to give another life to the girl, and in that life, the water spirit wanted to help Evilia.